Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're doing part two of biggest burning questions from every team. We went up from alphabetical order from Anaheim to Montreal last time. Now we're on Nashville all the way up to what? Who is that? Uh, Jets. Winnipeg Jets. Doing Nashville to Winnipeg Jets. We did this all on my live stream. You can be part of that live stream by hitting the sub button. And I'll send you my Angel Pearls of Necklace, Wisdom Necklace and the Frolic Will Be Endless. And I'm pretty sure um, it eradicates uh, animals being killed in other areas of the world where they're not supposed to if you hit the subscribe button. So you're saving in, in extinct that's what I'm trying to say. It alleviates the extinction of animals if you hit the subscribe button. I'm pretty sure. Try it. See what happens. Uh, anyways, we did this on the NHL's per, NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Uh, and what we did is there's a whole bunch of people that come on the show. And we all banter and frolic and talk about what are the biggest questions on our hearts and minds about each NHL team going into the 2021 season? And this is what we came up with, which is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Do you like all four major sports and teams within those four major sports? Well, then you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. The best network in the land, don't you know? All right, let's start with the Nashville Predators. Here we are. Nashville Predators, the biggest questions. How much time does Poyle have? That's the biggest question that came up in this. A lot of people thinking that Poyle might be on the hot seat here. Um, could be. This team has been floundering for quite some time. Uh the move with getting Ryan Johansson back, how long ago was that now, uh, has not worked out for Seth Jones. Uh, Matt Duchesne pickup did not work out. I personally thought the Ryan Johansson trade was bad at the time, and I got smacked all around because of it. People were like, oh, you know, it's just a, a position for position. I'm like, if Ryan Johansson can't make it as a number one with uh, Tortorella, he probably well. It almost always works out when big players like that don't are he. Tortorella is not big on him. They don't end up doing very well. So, and uh, you're talking about Seth Jones. I just really like Seth Jones at the time. So, anyways, a lot of things not working out in Nashville. Um, their defense is still. Very good. We're going to see now what Philip Myers can do after Ellis is traded. Looks like they're getting younger. Um, but it is a good question. Uh, this Nashville's been spinning their wheels for a little too long here. Uh, can't Don't really know what direction they are going. It seems like they're a bit tweener right now. And Poyle has got his fingers all over this. So you never know. I mean... I would say that out of all the general managers, he might be the biggest one in the hot seat. Uh, what will how will, what will Cody Glass do? And that is a night a big intriguing question there. Uh, after making a three way trade again for uh, removing Ellis, bringing in Myers, and then getting Patrick, trading him to Vegas in the three way de deal, and getting Cody Glass, who was I believe a sixth overall pick. Yes, look at that. I knew that right off the top of my head. Uh, <coughs> he hasn't panned out. In, he didn't pan out in Vegas. And now Nashville's going to take the reins and see if they can get something out of him. Man, they, do they need him to pan out here. They need him, need him, need him. Anyways, again, more about getting younger. Okay, uh, what do you think about that? Oh, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, will Saros hold up? 
And that that's like what they all they got there is Soros right now. Uh, I believe he will, but that was a good question. Uh, go to the New Jersey Devils. How much does Hamilton improve is the number one question, or how does Hamilton improve the defense here in – how much does he improve the defense here in New Jersey? What do you guys think? Yeah, he was a big paycheck. Uh, six foot six, 229 defensemen don't come around every day. But Dougie Hamilton isn't really known for his physicality. He's known more for his offense. And uh, he's also known for being pretty high on the analytics people's charts. I think he's going to do well. Um, I know there's a lot of New Jersey fans that think, oh, not another P.K. Subban, because P.K. Subban was an analytics starling on his way in and hasn't panned out all that great in New Jersey. So it's a bit of a risk at $9 million a year. I'm not going to lie. That's that's a lot of money for any defenseman, but it's what they needed. They needed defense. He's not that old at 28 years old. My inkling is he's going to work out fine here. Um, the thing about Dougie Hamilton is he's been, there has been rumblings about difficulty in the room getting along with his other teammates. So that's going to be the big thing. Is he going to be able to uh, erase that? Um, that uh, rumor mill type stuff about him or the uh, uh, that identity that he has on himself right now here in New Jersey. So should be interesting to watch. Uh, how will Bernier do? I think Bernier is going to do absolutely amazing. But yeah, it's an intriguing question. Uh, coming over from Detroit where he had a poor defense, uh, it's very possible that Blackwood and Bernier could be the one of, if not the best top pairing gold to top pairing goaltenders in the league this year. I personally believe that. What do you guys think, fans out there, Devils fans or otherwise? Do you think this could be? Do you guys realize how good Bernier is? You're gonna about to find out. I'm pretty sure he's gonna keep on going like he was before. Um, I when I was in, I watched a lot of Detroit last year, and I kept on just being amazed at how many how many pucks from from very difficult spots this Bernier kept on, on kicking out and saving. He was just fantastic the last two years. And then, of course, the I thought this would be the number one question, but how will Hughes do this year? This is a big year. 20 years old, he's going to be bulked up a little more. I think he's going to crush it. He, I, I just... Watching him, I see him at least being as good as Barzal. He's got the skating and everything of Barzal. He's very creative. Um, I think he's going to do well this year. I think he's going to take me. He may just take Nico Heischer off that number one center perch. In fact, as you can see on Cap Friendly, they've already done that. So, next. Next. New York Rangers. Uh... Number one is everybody is all a flutter about uh, Alexis Lafreniere this year. Huge year for year for the 19-year-old. He had an awesome second half last year. And uh, when I watched him, I, I saw a guy who is going to crush it in this league. Question is, is it going to be this year? How much is he going to crush it this year? I don't want to put a number on it because the kid is so strong already. Uh, nothing would really surprise me, to tell you the honest truth. Uh, well, not nothing, but a point a game wouldn't surprise me, although I don't think it's likely because it's just such a feat to do. But 50, 60 points maybe already at this stage of his career? I think it's possible. What do you guys think, Rangers fans? Z, another question was ZN Panarin hits 100 points. Can Zabonijad hit 100 points? I'm not sure that he's a 100-point guy. Even if he scores 40 or 45 goals, he's more of a shoot-first guy. I don't, I don't think so. But tell me if you guys think so. Uh, Panarin, yes. Panarin, I, I see no reason why you can't hit 100 points again. He's just sick. Just sick. 
That shot off the left side on the top hand corner is almost unstoppable. I swear to God. Incredible. And uh, will Goudreau live up to his dollars? Um, I don't know if he lives up to his dollars in ways that you would think, but I mean, these guys are really valuable now. Good. Guys like Barkley, Goudreau, Tanov got a pretty good paycheck. Look at what Coleman got in Calgary. Um, these heart and soul physical guys that can skate and are big are obviously 6'2", 215. These guys, are they're starting to show the value out there for players like this. Anderson really pushed for his contract for that reason because he believed that they should get more respect. We'll see. I mean, it is valuable to have a guy like Barkley Goudreau. Tampa Bay gave up a first-round pick for him, who was playing fourth line in San Jose. And yeah, there is a lot of value in it. So I think it was a good move uh, as far as having the player in there. Do I think he's overpaid? Nowadays, I don't, I'm not sure it is overpaid because it's so hard to find guys that can skate and are that big. Uh, New York Islanders, next. Um, will Sorokin surpass Varlamov? It's the number one question for the New York Islanders. And I think it's a heck of a question. Uh, it was kind of the top of me, except, but I just think it's going to happen for sure this year. Not that anything to do with Varlamov. It's just Sorokin just needed a, a one or two years. His numbers in the KHL were absolutely insane. I think he's just going to crush it this year. Um, and it's just necessary. There's no way Varlamov, I don't believe, is getting uh, another contract like this after this. Although I'm sure there is someone out there that's going to give him a pretty sizable contract, but the Islanders won't be able to do it. So, it's probably not likely that Varlamov is going to be the future of this organization. So I, uh, Sorokin is, and I think they're going to give him as many games as they possibly can. And as long as he shows he can handle it, and going by the 2.17 and the 9.18 last year, he likely can. I could see Varlamov's minutes start, or games starting to drop. Uh, how will Parise do? And I personally... That's the next question. I personally think that now that he's out of the cloud of the large contract of Minnesota, and uh, you know he it's not the captain, it's going to be sort of like a um, not Price, uh, Perry in Montreal. Um, it's he's not going to have any pressure on him at all. Except I think he'll get more offense than Perry did. I think he's going to do really well here. And like usual, um, Lamorello makes very good decisions on bringing in people that, first of all, he knows. Second of all, is in the perfect spot for them, giving them the best opportunity to succeed. So, yeah, I think there's going to be some success here for sure. Um, Next, Ottawa Senators. Um, yeah, Ottawa Senators. Will Murray or Gustafson take the reins here? Either one or one of them. That is what everybody's on their minds. And I agree. In Ottawa, they've got a pretty solid young team. But... Goaltending is a big question mark. Here they have Anton Forsberg here. I, I can't see Anton Forsberg being, taking this spot. Gustafsson played really well last year. The, I, I mean, Murray just hasn't shown it. Uh, he was better in the second half last year. Does that mean he's going to grow into being what they always – into his $6 million contract with Gustafsson breathing down his neck? I personally think Gustafson's going to take the reins and they'll be fine because of Gustafson, not because of Murray. But we'll see uh, if that turns out to be the case. What do you guys think? Do you think Murray's going to do it? 
Uh, next. Oh, sorry. Next question. Uh, how will Kachuk do? Well, first of all, will he get signed? Right? Uh, I'm not liking the way they're dragging their heels on this one. Kachuk is, sounds frustrated. Um, he doesn't. Apparently, they offered him eight million for eight, and I got a lot of. And, and okay, let's look at this deal. Uh, look at Kachuk here. They don't have Kachuk in here. Where do they have Kachuk on this? Stutz Labatherson. Kachuk, reserve list. Okay, here we go. Um, let's look at it here. His points now. This is the reason why I had this argument with Ottawa Senators fans. Uh, 45, 44, and 36 points. Not actually huge. But I think he's got more skill than his brother, although his brother's put up more points. He's just played with a lot younger roster. And I think this is where the frustration is happening is – that Ottawa's saying, look, you know, you haven't put up the points for us to, you know, we'll give you $8 million a year. That's well over your point production so far. And Kachuk's side is going, I would have had a lot more points if I was playing with what my brother was playing with and Goudreau and Lynn Holm and guys like that. And I agree. I totally agree with them. I would. I would not be going, what do you want, 8.7? Give me 8.7 for 8. And this is where Ottawa Senators fans are saying, well, he's not worth that. And I'm like, well, you want to tick him off? And in a couple of years, he decides to walk and go play with his brother somewhere or whatever the case may be. Kachuks win Stanley Cups. Simple as that. You got a Kachuk, you're pro, you know, you're, you got a Kachuk, you got a much greater chance to win a Stanley Cup, especially a guy like Brady Kachuk. Um, I'm giving him 8.7. His value is not just points. His value is aggression. His value is leadership. His value is the guy just plays the game the way it needs to be played and uh, is an example to the rest of his teammates on how to be every day to win a cup. Man, I, I'd be all over signing that guy for 8.7 if that'll do it for eight years for sure. Get him locked up. Get him locked up, man. Uh, anyways, how will he play? Uh, if he gets on the ice, he'll be a professional and do exactly what he's always done, I believe. Is the defense ready yet is the next one. And I, I don't – I mean, I think it's okay, but there's depth issues still in Ottawa. If they have injuries, uh, Eric Brandstrom's going to get a really good chance this year. Uh, Zaitsev is meh, not really a top two – there is still some significant depth issues on the roster as it is. Um, do they have guys that can come up and, like, is Jake Sanderson ready? I don't think they think that they are. Uh, Tyler Clevin. Um, there's, a lo there's a lot of young guys coming up, but nobody that's really knocking on the door. So that is the biggest issue with me, with the auto well, and goaltending as well. So they're not there yet. But, so I would say no. What do you guys think? Ottawa Senators fans, do you think your defense is ready now to, to be a team that makes the playoffs? I know you had a great second half, but looking on paper, I'm a little bit iffy on that. By the way, excellent move getting Sanford for uh, a prospect that just wasn't panning out at all um, in Brown. Uh, it was... Fantastic move. I think you're going to really like Zach Brown. I, Zach Sanford. I, I think St. Louis is undervaluing the guy a lot. So um, I wouldn't even doubt if he asked to be traded. So get a really good opportunity in Ottawa. But I thought that was a fantastic move. I thought you were going to get like a middle round pick for him the way he was going. He just looked terrible. Uh, next, Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers. Uh, 
that's the number one question is the number one question everybody is on everybody's minds. How will Carter Hart do? 24, year old, 24 years old. I believe he's going to be 24 years old right away. Uh, had a rough year last year. I've watched Carter Hart for an awful long time. And no, he just turned 23. Okay, just 20, turned 23. I've watched him for a long time. He's from my area, Sherwood Park. And uh, I live in Edmonton. And I saw a guy that just never, nothing ever rattled him. Nothing. And then last year he looked rattled. Defense was terrible. Uh, you got a question? Hextall said that he wasn't ready. Is Hextall right? I think he's going to come back. I think he's going to have a strong year this year. He has to have a strong year this year because they're not going anywhere without him. Will Frost succeed with injuries? Will Frost succeed? Yes, there has been some injuries. Lynn Hayes, Morgan Frost is going to get a chance at the second line center position. Will he succeed? Well, he put on the weight. He put on the extra 20 pounds. That's a lot of weight to put on, though. So I got to see, honestly. I can't really put a projection on this because a guy puts on 20 pounds of weight who is a speedy, uh, shifty guy. How much is that going to affect the speediness and shiftiness of the guy? Quite often, it can be very difficult for them. In fact, I would say he's probably more inclined to be in the second, third line spot. But he's going to give it a good shot now. This I'm not going to give a projection on this. I'm just rooting for him to do really well. Um, how will... New additions gel, and that's to me that's the biggest one here. Besides Carter, I actually know Carter Hart is the biggest one. But how will they gel? Um, Rasmus Ristolainen. The one thing I liked about all the acquisitions is they were kind of all coming from a place and that their previous team was like a sigh of relief and gave them an energy to to have a future in front of them. Rasmus Ristolainen and Buffalo, they were going through another. Rebuild, which uh, with on the psyche is just terrible. And this is going to feel like freedom to him, um, which will change the energy in Philadelphia to excitement and glad to be here and all of those sort of things like that. And maybe wash away the energy of the last season, which didn't seem very good a little bit. Same as Ryan Ellis in Nashville. They were going to get younger and, um, you know, he hadn't had all that much success there and certainly didn't want to go through another re through a rebuild i would imagine at his age so this is going to be like a new life for him as well and he'll bring that energy as far as i've talked plenty about how i think that about their skill level and what's going to have to happen but as far as gelling is concerned i think because of that it could turn out pretty good for them um and then cam atkinson as well in columbus also, same sort of thing. He, it, it's, it was treacherous in Columbus the last uh, couple of years. Uh, Panarin leaving and Dubois leaving and just people leaving and leaving. And I think the energy was just sapped out of that organization. The goaltender even passing away, Kivalenkis. Uh, a lot of down, a lot of down, a lot of down. So I think there's going to be a huge excitement of a new rebirth from all of these. So I really love the energy. And in that way, I think it'll gel. Skill-wise, Ellis and Ellis, yes, Cam Atkinson, I think he can get back to that 30 goals area. I, I know there's a lot of people that think otherwise he's too small and stuff like that, but I think so. The, my biggest question is Rasmus Ristolainen, who has not been prepared very well up until now for the NHL in Buffalo, and that, he's 26 already, and his development hasn't been very good. Trying to turn that around at 26 can be difficult. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but we'll see. He's got all the tools, though. I mean, for sure. He's got all the tools physically, and uh, the shot is fantastic. The skating is just the mental stuff. Uh, next, Pittsburgh Penguins. The number one question for everybody is how does Jari bounce back from what was absolutely a 
horrible playoffs. Just terrible playoffs. And uh, I'm not sure, to tell you the honest truth. They say that they brought up his old AHL, got his old AHL goalie coach, and um, so they're looking towards that being the going to help him improve. And maybe it does, but I'll tell you this. He played for the Edmonton Oil Kings, and when I saw him, I'm like, that guy's going to play in the NHL, I, I thought personally. I didn't know if it was going to be a number one or what have you. Like He didn't blow me away that much. But what I saw in the playoffs there, I saw a guy that just totally imploded. So if his confidence comes back, he's shown that he had the tools when he was under the uh, confines of Murray, who happened to be there, and he was working his way to take that spot. Then he got the spot, and I think he kind of freaked out. So getting him back to just playing the game and not worrying about trying to impress anybody, maybe he'll be fine. Maybe he'll be fine. They certainly need him, dude. Uh, the, there was a, how will the fans handle not making the playoffs? And I would say they would handle it very poorly like any other fans, but even more poorly, uh, and maybe not poorly, but – very difficult since you've been used to making the playoffs for, what, 12 years now? It's going to be tough if they actually don't miss the playoffs. I don't have Pittsburgh projected to make the playoffs this year, but it's Pittsburgh. I don't like not projecting them because they seem to get a lot out of very little, a lot. If they make the playoffs, Sullivan should get coach of the year for sure, finally. He should get his coach of the year this year. Um, and will Melkin play or how will he play? I, I don't know. Dude. I just hope he comes back from these injuries because the league is better when Malcolm is awesome. When Malcolm is awesome. So just for that alone, I, I certainly hope he comes back with gangbusters. But man, it's been a fight with injuries for him and it's too bad to see. One thing I would like to mention, nice to see they're giving Danton Heinen like number one right winger minutes up there with what will be Jeff Carter and Teddy Bluger. That's going to be tough. Give him a shot. There's offense in that guy. I know there is. It's just, I don't know. He hasn't been able to put it together yet. Next, San Jose Sharks. Uh, and then, eh, I don't think you guys want to talk about this anymore, but Will Kane get arrested or return or whatever? And that's really the big thing, right? Um, it's concerning when you hear strong rumors of players not wanting to play there if Kane is going to be there. That's the difficult thing. If that is the case, then he can't come back. That's all I got to say about that. I, I, are those rumors not true? I mean, some very reputable people were saying that people like they're not going to come flat out and say that in public. There is not a player that would do that. In fact, any player that would do that would probably also be someone that nobody wants to play with. It's just an unwritten rule, no matter what the person to. For someone to come out in the media and say specifically, I don't want to play with Kane or whatever, a teammate like that is just sacrilege. There's no way it's going to come out. The fact that it would come out in public at all, though, makes... And nobody denied it. That's the thing. Nobody denied... Nobody said, oh, no, we didn't say that or anything like that. Like, nobody got angry. I can't believe this got out or... Nobody. So, if it's true, and it sounds like it probably is, yeah, you, you got to move on. You got to move on. And, and it's ter terrible. You get the caps, uh, uh, you know, you don't even get the cap space. I don't know what they're going to do. Such a difficult. Will Hurdle get traded? Apparently, Wilson is like all over re signing this guy. And it would. It seems to me that Thomas Hurdle might have been one of those players that said, I'm not going to come back if Kane doesn't come back. And if they sign him, I think there's a pretty good chance you're not going to see Kane ever in a San Jose Sharks uniform again. Just speculation there. I'm not telling. That's what I think. 
I've heard some, uh, I did read some articles where it's basically Hurdle said he wasn't sure if he was going to be a San Jose Shark anymore. And Wilson has just come out and said, we're doing everything we can to get Hurdle signed. He knows how much we think of him. That tells me it's very likely Kane is not coming back. It, it gives me the indication. If I got to put a bet on it, I would say it's a pretty good chance because of all of that narrative that that's the case. So we'll see if I'm right. Keep on following me and see if I'm right about these things. I actually quite often am. I don't know why, but I am. Uh, and then how will Hill be? And I have a feeling Hill's going to be fantastic. I, I just, I think it was a nice grab. Uh, he was doing very well in Arizona, uh, and he's just got that attitude. He kind of reminds me of Smith in Edmonton, where he's just a warrior kind of guy. He has the same sort of style, too. And I think he's going to do really well. I trust Nabokov's opinion, and I'm sure they consulted a lot with this. It might even have been Nabokov saying, get Hill, I can work with that guy. Um, and I think he's going to do really well. I think San Jose picked up a good one there. So there's some positivity in there for you, San Jose. Uh, Seattle, biggest question, how will Grubauer do? And that is, I think, the biggest question. Ron Francis put a lot of uh, confidence and put a lot on the line for Philip Grubauer who I think has been overall inconsistent in, in his career. He slammed it last year, no doubt about it, in front of a stellar Colorado defense system and everything. I'm not so sure that's going to be quite the case here in Seattle. It may be, though. Um, uh, on paper, it seems they have the depth. Of, it's just basically if they can play the system that's going to work for Grubauer and if he does and he could turn out really well i i'm very interested that is an awesome question um it would be really cool if grubauer could be that consistency and become that number one for seattle for sure um is is act is hackstall an nhl head coach and obviously ron francis thinks so and ron francis is a pretty smart dude um, I know when he was in college and he went to, before he went to Philadelphia, like he was being touted as an absolute genius. So I'm going to say that he probably will be. There's, there was some difficulties in Philadelphia. It was his first kick at the can. Um, I'm going to say he's a fast learner and I don't know everything that went on there, but, um, I'm just leaning that he's going to do very well in Seattle. I, I trust Ron Francis a lot with his, especially with his coaching decisions. So that'll be an interesting storyline to see. How will the team gel together? And that's what everybody's wondering. And I'm not sure. That's just one of those let's find out. That's exciting to see how a team's going to gel together when you put all these kind of players together to – just go there and they've never played with each other. Mostly haven't played with each other before. I think there are some players that have played with each other. But for the most part, they're all new to each other. And it's just like, bam, now we're going to play together. So it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, St. Louis Blues. How will Tarasenko do? I think Tarasenko will be a professional. I was pretty unhappy about something that happened with uh, some sort of lack of trust with the St. Louis Blues and his injuries and all that sort of thing. Um, but he eventually probably will be traded. I think he's going to be motivated to do very well as long as his shoulder holds up. And if his shoulder, shoulder holds up, he probably will do well, in which case somebody will take him. Uh, if that's still the case that he's going to be traded, if it's a definite, no doubt about it, I want to get traded out of this organization. And it seems to me he's made it quite clear that it is, but he's being, a, being very professional and realizing that, you know, you got to get the right deal or whatever the case may be. And there's not much he can do about it besides not play and not get paid. So I think as long as the shoulder holds up, I think he'll do fairly well. The two two or three shoulder injuries, oh man, oh man. It's no wonder everybody wants to see what he can do first before they 
give any value to him at all. Uh, how will Bugnevich affect the team? And that is a very good question because Bugnevich has been in the doghouse with the New York Rangers, with every coach that has coached him. How is that going to be with Barube? Barube is a pretty hard butt. <laughs> so I don't know. I There is a good possibility that Bukhnevich and Barube may not sit very well with each other. Um, he just seems like a different kind of guy that isn't very good defensively, and that's probably part of the question, part of the problem, and maybe is fairly vocal about why, you know, who knows? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think it's possible. But if if it, if uh, Barube can get that right combination, Buknevich, I mean, 48 points in 54 games last year, it was his best year so far, and he's only 26 years old. Cross your fingers and hope that whatever the personality issue is or whatever – previous coaches had a problem with him why he was in the doghouse is alleviated here in St. Louis because on the ice, Bicknevich can be extremely effective for St. Louis for sure. Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, no, that's not, not sorry, not Tampa Bay yet. Uh, oh, will Bennington find consistency? As long as Bennington can get to the point where he's focusing on his job and not worrying about the outside crap around him, yeah, he can Will he do that? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think Bennington's finally just going to stop worrying, thinking about uh, players around him and what the other team does and just stop pucks? He hasn't really shown it yet. Small chunks of time. But when he breaks away from it, uh, he's one of the most inconsistent goaltenders out there that way. Um, so I couldn't tell you. But I hope he does for St. Louis fan, fans' for sake. Uh, Tampa Bay, will the biggest question is, will they repeat? And it's going to be one tough battle. A short offseason, lost some players uh, in the offseason, of course, uh, with Gord and uh, the heck else did they lose? Can't. Is it just Gord? No, there was more than... Oh, Savard. They lost Savard. Uh, bringing in Elliott. I think they can cover those on paper. I don't think that's really the concern, although Zach Bogosian is not my favorite in the land. I think Cal Foot should take that spot this year. I really do. I'm not really a Zach Bogosian fan. He just... Uh, I wouldn't want... I'd rather have a young guy get a chance than have Zach Bogosian taking up space. Um, well, Sergei, Sergei, Mikhail Sergachev takes the next step. He's 23, going to be 24. Um, Chernak can take another step. I, I think that they're set up all right here. I really think they're going to be fine as far as manpower is concerned. Getting Corey Perry, uh, bringing in Alex, or uh, bringing in Pierre Mark, Pierre. Edward Bellamar as well. I think they're going to be okay um, as far as manpower is concerned. The question is, this is a long run. I mean, super long. And a short off season. are they going to tire out? I thought maybe they would last year, but they took it easy during the regular season. And maybe they sort of do the same thing here and are fine for the for the playoffs but man it's a good question i don't really know to tell you the honest truth uh not this team is on paper is still fantastic how will perry do he'll be as annoying self and if they make the playoffs he'll be a catalyst guaranteed for sure and will sorelli step it up or and elliot um i think elliot will be better than in philadelphia just a better defense is going to help them an awful lot. Uh, also playing with a more um, established goaltender in Vasilevsky rather than a kid should help him just be able to do his job and not have to be a mentor on top of it. Um, as far as Sorelli, this is a huge year for Sorelli. Didn't have the greatest numbers last year. Um are going to be 25 years old. I, I think he'll take this opportunity by the horns and, 
uh, go with it, fly with it. I, I see no reason why. He's always a, one of the hardest workers out there. So I think he'll do well. Next, Toronto Maple Leafs. How many goals will Matthews get? And I'm going to say 60. What do you guys think? How many goals will Matthews get this year? I'm going 60. 60 goals this year for Matthews. Uh, how bad will Mrazek be? And, uh, man, I'm not confident. I know he had good numbers in Carolina, but overall in his career he's been very inconsistent. I, I, I'm not very confident that he's going to be that great, to tell you the honest truth. And he's the reason why I have him them being on the bubble with other teams to in that division to make the playoffs. And that's terrible to think about, but with that offense that they have. But one of the reasons, anyways. How will the bargain basement players do? That being the bargain basement price players do. And I think they were good bargain basement players to pick. Um, Nick Ritchie finally getting an opportunity. Uh, he did kind of get one in Boston, but... He did well, but kept on falling down the roster. Why? Why does he keep on falling down the roster? Because he's terrible defensively. And he makes poor decisions uh, a lot, too, too often. Is that going to stop in Toronto? I personally don't think so. Uh, if they can get it to stop, though, he can be a great player. He can be a power forward for you. Huge, big power forward. But his decision-making lets you down too often. Um, I think Bunting was a great pickup. He uh, a fantastic taking a flyer on the guy that had a great second half in Arizona. If he plays like that and can hold that at his size, um, which 5'11", 197, I think that's a little generous. But if he can, I could see him doing very, very well. I think it might have been the pickup of the year. And I'm, I'm honestly surprised there wasn't more people – giving him an opportunity and giving him some money because he really looked good in Arizona there for that last little while. So, um, and then of course, uh, camp David camp. He is what he is. He should more of a fourth liner than a third liner. Uh, he'll be, he'll be what he is. He'll be a tough, uh, not a bad face off guy, play up and down the wing, get some hits. It's pretty good. And Kasha, of course, was uh, as a scratch right now. Injured and comes off. You never know with injured players. All of a sudden, they could turn it around. It was a nice flyer to take, but uh, I'm not, to tell you the honest truth, I have no idea how he's going to do. Next, Vancouver Canucks. Will Patterson go off? And I say, yes, 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 yes. I'm never, I'm not going to doubt a guy like Pedersen with his shot and everything. I'm sure he'll bulk up a little bit more this year. And he's just a beast. He's just an absolute beast. I think he's going to completely go off this year. Will they sign Besser? I think, yes, they will. Um, they may trade JT Miller, although I've heard they're saying that they want, they're they not wanting to trade their depth, but I don't think they have a choice if they sign. Once they sign Hughes and Pedersen, they're going to have to trade somebody. Does it have to be Besser? Maybe Besser has given an indication that he'd like to go to the United States back or home or something like that. And then, yeah, I suppose they trade Besser. But, man, that would suck. He's so good. So good. I'd rather trade JT Miller. And I know JT Miller has been doing great in Vancouver, but I would rather trade JT Miller and sign Brock up for long term. Okay. Uh, next would be how will EK play? And I think this, I thought this was going to be the number one. How will Ekman Larson play? Uh, EK, why EK? Ek, okay. Ekman Larson play now that he's in Vancouver. I think he's going to have a new fire in him, man. Like Arizona was a struggle and played a system that really did not work with his style. This, he's going to now have a new life here in Vancouver. I have a feeling he's going to do really well in this system compared to Arizona's system with Tockett behind there. And it's going to be exciting for him. So 
yeah, I think he's going to turn it around. I, I really do. Um, that's it. Vegas is next. How does Patrick play? That's the number one thing. And I, if they can get the guy's got so many tools. 6'2", 200. Uh, he, when he was drafted, they were comparing him to guys like Eric Stahl. But the migraine problems. And I'm sorry, I did not like his attitude after he left Philadelphia. He seemed bitter about a team that I think gave him every opportunity and never complained once. They never said. They kept up. Maybe behind the scenes, I don't know, there could have been something else. But I'm a little concerned. One thing I got to say, though, is that Vegas does really well at bringing in players and letting them fly, and they do very well. Chandler Stevenson, Marcia so of course, William Carlson. Nobody saw that coming. How many know that nobody saw that coming do you get before you real think that this team seems to be able to know how to get the right combination for players. So if there's any chance for Nolan Patrick, this might be the best organization for him, I would say. Uh, will Laner be good enough? Apparently he lost some weight and he got in a heck of a lot of shape and he, he's in good spirits. And if he is, and he, again, almost like Bennington, if he just focuses on stopping pucks, the guy's got skill that for his size, he's so freaking fast, Matt. 6'4", I guess it says 240, but I think he lost, I think he said he lost like 20 pounds because he knows he's going to have a lot of workload this year. And uh, his reflexes are insane. And he just, when, I don't know, when I watch him, he looks like a goaltender that's telling everybody, like very intimidating, like you ain't getting this past me, yo. It just ain't happening. So if he's got that mojo and he's focused and not worrying about exterior stuff, he could do crazy good things. I've always loved this guy. I've always loved his physical tools. It's just been a mental thing with him. Maybe he overcomes it this year and, yeah, he'd be amazing. Who will play center? And that's a really good question. Again, you got Patrick Nolan. I think they're still sticking with Chandler Stevenson for now, but I've heard that if Genny Dadanoff was going to get a shot, um, I'm still not very comfortable with the center line uh, for um, Vegas, but I've got to see it. I'm not sure who's going to keep on, who's going to play. Uh, I think it's probably going to be Chandler Stevenson until somebody takes it off of them. They didn't go out and get a real true number one guy. It looks like they kind of put a, kind of did a center by committee type system here. So um, Stevenson, William Carlson, and I'm sure they're going to give Nolan Patrick every chance he's got, he, he has there. Brett Howden did terrible for the Rangers. So maybe if Genny did enough and they tried Nolan Patrick on the fourth line to start off with, but I don't know. Uh, it's going to be a center by committee, uh, it, it appears right now. Washington Capitals. And the big question, will Ovechkin hit 50 goals again? I don't know. Probably. I, are you going to doubt Ovechkin? I'm not. Still one of, the, one of, if not the best shots in the league. Uh, as long as Evgeny Kuznetsov has got his head in the right place or if he plays with Backstrom, it's just amazing. I'm never going to undervalue what he can do. Um, will the goaltending be okay? I'm leaning to no. I'm not a big Samsonov guy or a Vanacek guy. Um, I got to see it from Samsonov. The injury issues and everything, I think it could be a big problem for the Washington Capitals. But a big question. And then, if, then what I said is, how will Kuznetsov be, and will there be a fight, the big fight night with the Rangers? Yeah, yeah, there will be. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I'll be watching it for sure. Kuznetsov, I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. Get in trouble as much as he has. Maybe he's put his head, maybe he bears down and starts 
doing what the team wants because this team is not really like a team that is uh, too strict with his players. If you saw like Ovechkin's partying and they're pretty loosey goosey, they let him do what they want. And this guy keeps on getting trouble over and over and over again. So toe the line, dude. It's time to toe a very loose line. And if you can, yeah, but if he's back to his issues, could be could be terrible. Uh, Winnipeg Jets. How will Dubois do is the number one for the Winnipeg Jets. And uh, from what I've seen from Dubois from last year, I'd say no, not well. Um, man, uh it, it was a weird situation in Columbus. And Tortorella seemed totally taken aback. Apparently, he just loves Dubois' tools. Maybe it was just a breather. I think there was a lot of pressure on Pierre-Luc Dubois and in Columbus, and he didn't like being under that pressure that was happening with Tortorella, trying to make him into that true number one center, as he has done with other players in the league. And this is a year where he just kind of shakes his head and gets back to business again. And if he does, then, I mean, yeah, he'll be fantastic. But really kind of concerned about the way he came back last year after leaving Columbus because he did not look good in the playoffs and he didn't look good in the second half. Uh, hard to say. Hard to say. Uh, will Hollabuck be better this year? I imagine he'll be fantastic. Defense should be better with Brendan Dillon. Not sure about Nate Schmidt. Nate Schmidt's had two bad years in a row, but Brendan Dillon will definitely solidify a defense for you. Um, and I just think Connor Hellebuck is fantastic. I, he wasn't horrible. A .916 isn't terrible. It's just not his numbers. But yeah, I think it will be fine. And will the defense additions be enough? Like I just mentioned, I'm not sure about Nate Schmidt. Paul Maurice has seemed to be able to get the best at a defenseman. I've heard arguments that that's not the case, uh, but I don't see it. They were middle of the league last year in shots against with the defense that wasn't very good on paper at all. It's a little better this year. Logan Stanley is going to get an extra year to grow into what he's going to be. Uh, Pionk is great. It's just all about Nate Schmidt, man. He's had two poor years, but they obviously must see something really in him that they like. And Paul Maurice was probably, uh, you know, it was in conversation about this. And look at what happened to Pionk when he got there. He was already going, projecting well, but he, he, he really just grew into a fantastic defenseman. Um, Dylan DeMello was in and out of the lineup and Ottawa came up and he was playing sometimes top four minutes and doing fairly well in Winnipeg. So look at Forbert. Forbert, Forbert came to Winnipeg and it brought him up to new levels of his career. And now you got to give Paul Maurice a lot of credit for that, I think. So Schmidt could definitely turn it around and just rock it here. No doubt about it. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give today. Thank you for coming on to my to this fine programming. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Be part of the frolic. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye.